Good morning. I am recording this again. Check, check, check. Make sure that it's being recorded because I had an issue. Check, check. Okay, now it's being recorded. Oh my goodness, I have to do this again. <laughs> uh, the new microphone that I'm using uh, was not on. So I did the whole English and Korean, and now I got to do it again. So let's start with prayer. Father, we are thankful for re-recording of this message or sharing daily gospel. Uh, let Genesis 4 come alive. Minister to us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to actually uh, see if I could just read all the way through and then pick up on, on it, uh, Genesis chapter 4, 1 through 7. This is word of the Lord, New King James, New, from New King James. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I've acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time, his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of this flock and their, their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Amen. Wow. Powerful, powerful stuff. So Genesis 4, the first time the word sin is mentioned. Sin is crouching at the door, but you must dominate it. You must overcome it. You must subdue it. Don't make an excuse that, well, God, you made me this way. God, you make me like woman. So I'm going to fornicate with every beautiful woman that I meet. No, it doesn't work that way. God, you made me an alcoholic. I love alcohol. So I'm going to live as an alcoholic, die as an alcoholic. No, it doesn't work that way. God, you made me a gambler. So I'm going to gamble away all my wealth and I'm going to become ruined. And well, there's nothing you can do. Well, it's not acceptable. Why is your face fallen? Why are you angry with me? God says. Adam knew his wife. Yada. That's where we get Seinfeld. Remember? Uh, the, the program Seinfeld was a very popular in our time. And it's just uh, uh, Jewish people in New York. And the one guy said, well, I met a boyfriend. And we did yada, yada, yada. And so actually the word yada means sex or to know or intimacy have relationship. So when Adam knew Eve's wife was translated by New International Version, Adam made love to his wife Eve. Or New Living Translation, now Adam has sexual relations with his wife. So knowing is a very intimate act. It's not just having information about somebody. The same concept goes to Jesus when Jesus says, I knew you or I did not know you, which means, of course, Jesus knows you. He counts the number of your hair, but instead it says, well, I have no intimacy with you. I have no relationship with you. So salvation belongs to those who have intimacy with God, knowing God intimately, not just know about Jesus. And in the same way it says, well, Adam knew and then gave a birth to Cain and the word Cain actually means Cain and doesn't mean much other than Cain. And Abel also, it just means second son of Adam. It's not like Chinese character, like Sokwan means bright and brighter. So it means that. And no, it just means Abel. And they both became, uh, one became keeper of sheep and Cain became the tiller of the ground. Like farmer versus shepherd. This is what Matthew Henry wrote. Uh, observe, each son had a calling. It is the will of God for everyone to have something to do in this world. Wow, that's pretty profound, right? I said amen to that. I used to love Matthew Henry's concise commentary. I bought the entire set and read it when I was 18. 
But then 42 years later, something happened. It says, it said, and then he says, um, we, might, we may believe that God commanded Adam after the fall to shed the blood of innocent animals and after their death to burn part or the whole of their bodies by the fire as part of the worship. Is it really? Is that what, is that what Genesis 4 says? I think he's really reading way more into that I would want. And I need to apologize. You banging sound, actually, when I came to Cambodia last night and opened the window, my door, my favorite studio, it used to be open field. It was so calm and beautiful. Now, literally right next to, I mean, right next to the wall of our property, uh, they are building stuff right now. Oh, it's so disheartening. So you're going to hear some banging for next three months that I'm recording here. If, if I don't do like four in the morning or five in the morning, because they start working like 6.30 in the morning, so you may hear this bang. Just apologize for that. But Matthew Henry really reads much more into that and saying that this kind of animal sacrifice was needed, in, implying that Cain didn't do that. No, actually not. Here. And it was so after some time that Cain brought of the fruit of the earth as a sacrifice to the Lord, and Abel also brought an offering, meaning, like Cain, he also brought the fed portion from some of the firstborn of the flock, as Cain brought the first choice fruit, first fruit of his harvest. So here, we're trying to explain why God did not accept Cain's offering and accepted Abel's offering. Reasonably try to reason out. No, it doesn't work that way because it just simply means God saw the heart uh, of Cain and, and it was no re rational reason to back it up. It's just God did not respect, the Bible says. The Abel also brought the offering, the Lord looked with favor and Abel and his offering. But the Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry. The King James says he did not respect. So he was very wroth. The New Living Translation said, Lord accepted, but did not accept Cain's. And Cain was very angry, right? How long did Cain hate his brother as long as he was able? <laughs> as long as he was able. And we learned that when in, in, I think, junior high that got stuck with me. How long did Cain hate his brother? As long as he was able. But the word angry actually means jealousy, zeal. It, when Cain committed sin of competing and comparing, the word sin for the first time in human history is introduced. So what is sin? Sin of comparing, competing. When, what happened to Eve when Satan come and said, Eve, you can be like God. She started comparing herself with God. She started competing with God, right? The word sin is first mentioned in 4.7 here. And it says that Cain, yeah, sin has come and he's crouching at the door, lies at the door, but you shall have this desire to sin, but thou shalt rule over him. You may have this urge, but you could rule over it. You could have dominance over you, but you must subdue it. You could do it. Don't make that excuse. Don't say that God made me this way. Let sin not reign in your mortal body. So Paul picks that, picks that up in Romans 6, 12. He says, you need to subdue it. Dominant. You need to reign over it. Like Romans 6, 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its desires. Martin Luther said, yeah, sin is like a bird flying over your head. You cannot help that. I mean, bird decide to fly over your head. The sin comes and tempts you, try to rule, you know, rule over you, but just that don't let that bird put a nest in your head, in, over your head. Sin may fly over you, there's nothing you can do, but don't let that bird, sin, put a nest, build a nest in your head. The more you think about it, more you compare competing, then it's going to live out in action. Right? Proverbs, uh, Romans 6.16, do not let, do you not, 
know that you offer your body as obedient slaves. You are slave to the one you serve. Obey, whether you are slave to sin leading to death or to obedience leading to righteousness. Same thing. When you constantly give yourself to righteousness and righteous act, righteous habit, good habit, reading the Bible, meditating, spirit, let life, let the Holy Spirit God lead you, guide you each single day. Wow. Then you become the slave to righteousness. But you let the sin play over your mind go over and over again, then, well, then you sin. And as God asked Cain, why are you upset? Why is your face fallen? Why are you angry with me? Because the word angry actually is not toward anything, but it was angry toward God. I love the way the pulpit commentary writes, Cain was very wrought, literally, it burned with Cain exceedingly, and his countenance fell in fierce resentment against his brother, possibly in disappointed rage against himself, almost certainly in anger against God. But there was apparently no sorrow for sin, no spirit of inquiry or self examination, prayer to God for light of pardon, clearly showing that Cain was far from right state of mind. That's why God keep on asking, why are you mad? Why are you mad at me? Just like asking Jonah, Lord replied, have you any right to be angry with me, Jonah? I'm trying to save millions of people in Nineveh and you are angry with me. Why? Do you even have right to be angry with me? It's kind of a same nuance. Cain, I accepted your brother's worship offering. If I did not accept yours, why don't you ask me, Lord, how, how can I? Offer an acceptable offering so that I could do that next time. Not angry at my brother and thinking of murdering him because the thought was in his mind. That's why God wants him to repent, asking the question, probing him and giving an opportunity. Just like, well, remember Jesus, I mean, God will ask, okay, where are your brother? Just the same way that he asked his father, Adam, where are you? Where are your brothers? It's giving you a chance, you know, before the punishment. But unfortunately, Cain goes on, keep on keeping on, and arguing, defending, and sin against God, and sin against his brother, killing his brother. He hated his brother as long as he was able, and murders him. Father, I pray that such thing will not be done in our lives today, Lord. God, we don't want to compete and compare. We want to serve and be happy serving you, Lord. Each are born with different calling, and we must, Father, complete the calling that you've given each day. Let this day that will fulfill the call that you have given in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord bless you guys. And hopefully that this will be recorded fine. I don't have to do three times. Lord bless you. See you tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow is my... 43rd birthday spiritually august 3rd 1979 i encountered jesus so i'm gonna put, put a little testimony on that tomorrow maybe sing your song i don't know depends lord bless you see you tomorrow Mwah.